Okay, um, here's the second part of the uh, our lab uh, eight, the random forest lab. Um, the warning at the beginning is a good one. Don't knit the whole thing at once because it does take a fair bit of time to do. Um, we're going to keep investigating the Ames housing database. So this first uh, set of chunks uh, just recreates what we did in 8A, installs all those packages, uh, gets that Ames housing database, um, changes the price to the log price, and creates the train and test set. Um, again, because we use the seed, we're going to get the same uh, two data sets that we had before. So um, as we talked about before, um, there are several tuning parameters to talk about. Um, the one, mTry, is the one that people typically uh, fiddle with the most, and that's how many variables you use at a time. The default setting is actually a pretty good one, but the idea is if you include too many models, I'm sorry, too many variables in your random forest, then the trees are going to be too similar and that means we won't get that cool kind of variation that makes random forest so powerful. If we use too few, then we might not get very good trees. So even though we'll have a lot of them, some of them will be really icky. Um, somewhere in between, there's this good uh, spot that you might want to have. Um, the random forest package we download has a tool called TuneRF, and that lets you find a value that you'd like. Um, and here are some of the other options that you can go in and have. Um, so um, here for this, um, we do have to split the X and the Y variable, which is sort of a weird uh, thing that we do um, to do that. So we go ahead and run that. And what it's going to do is it's going to make random forests for different number of variables and see how well it works. Um, I did step factor of 1.5, which means that we started with that number 26, which is the number we ended up using. And it multiplies and divides by a factor of one and a half. So we get up to 39 and down to 18. You can fiddle with those different parameters and see if you can find the lowest OOB error. And remember the out of bound error, the smaller that is, the better your model's gonna be. So here's a couple questions about those. The other cool part of random forests are that because you're making so many trees, it's hard to see which variables are used in the model all the time. And you could easily imagine that pulling out the best variables is gonna be important um, especially if you're thinking about future data collection, maybe you can't uh, cheaply collect all of the variables. So by finding out which variables are most important, you can kind of get a better understanding of how the model works and think about why you're collecting the variable you have or how it's working. Again, random forests are sort of weird because since you can't see what's happening on the inside, it's sort of this magical, mystical black box uh, to give you answers. So, um, I'm going to go here and calculate this random forest. Um, again, I'm using the X and Y that we calculated before. I'm only going to make 50 trees, so it goes a little faster. Um, as it does it, what it does is it calculates what percent of the uh, models, what percent of the trees each of the variables is going to be included in. You can see these are funny exponents again, but 10 to the minus 2 means that it is um, in about 3% of the time. So when we come over here, um, what we can see is uh, it's rescaled and you can see which variables are now going to be important. Overall quality, the external quality, how big the house is, those are all going to be uh, factors that influence um, how good um, our model is going to be. Okay, and that's um, really it for what we're going to do with random, model, random forest for this class. But I want to mention at least one other thing, um, which is the idea of imputing data. Now, imputing data is something that some people like to do and some people think is a sort of sketchy, but the idea is you can use random forests to impute the variables that are missing. Um, you might remember in that Kim data set, we had the person who didn't give their gender, and because that person was short, um, I sort of implied that it would be reasonable to assume the person was a uh, female. What RF impute does is it calculates an entire random forest to fill in each of your missing uh, values. And so, um, when you do have a giant data set with just a few missing points, you can use imputation um, to calculate that. Um, and um, because of the way random forests work, if you do random forest imputation, you probably don't also want to do random forest to calculate uh, your model because you're kind of using the same ideas twice. So you can imagine that Netflix maybe wouldn't want to use random forest to impute the data that you're missing. So um, anyway, 
Um, random forests are kind of the most complicated uh, thing we're going to do here in STAT 220. Um, if you do feel like you've kind of missed uh, some of the details about it, this idea that it's going to be calculating uh, a whole bunch of trees, each tree is going to randomly select certain variables and is going to bootstrap to create a new uh, bootstrap sample of your original data set. And by using those two techniques together, we're able to get these very powerful uh, predictive elements. And like I said in the other video, random forests um, are working because they're really what a lot of these uh, data providers, these data companies are using, companies like Amazon, Netflix. Um, they're using this. Um, it's a part of the Facebook algorithm too, we believe, although Facebook doesn't really share how uh, they use their ads, but we're pretty sure um, that random forests are part of that. Um, it's what's used by political parties to try to figure out who you're likely to vote for. Um, and even more than that, who is likely to be undecided because that undecided voter is totally the person they're going to go after. So random forests really are um, kind of the coolest thing going on right now, and which is why I wanted you to see them, even if it really is more than we can maybe really do a lot with in this class.